Thank you very much for the introduction. Um, so yes, my name's John Davis. I'm a senior scientist at Illica Technologies, which is an AIM-listed company. Uh, Illica was spun out of the University of Southampton uh, back in 2004, and we've steadily uh, expanded ever since. We now th have 35 employees. We focus on, as it says, the, uh, the high-throughput discovery, discovery of novel materials. And I'm going to talk a little bit today about some specific work we've done in the area of low-cost catalysts for PEM fuel cells. So, as I mentioned, novel materials via a high-throughput methodology is what we do. Uh, we mainly focus on the energy and electro electronics sectors. So in the case of clean tech, we're talking about fuel cell materials, hydrogen storage materials. We also work in areas like um, battery materials as well. Uh, the general way in which we like to operate is to engage with large multinationals from an early stage of a re research program and essentially to undergo joint development programs in order to produce an IP stream that will then provide us with licensing revenue in the future. Uh, and that's underpinned by a certain level of contract research that's also performed. So, high throughput materials discovery. Basically what we do, as you can see in the bottom left hand side there, a small electronics chip that's about 35 mil by 35 mil. On that chip, we can deposit materials, 100 different materials of 100 different compositions. We then have, uh, th basically this is done using a, a physical vapor deposition system to deposit thin film materials. Uh, that means that we can speed up the discovery process by characterizing and screening, uh, also in a high throughput manner, these materials. And in order to actually view all of this and, and to uh, get out data in a coherent manner, we have uh, an in-house informatics system which can then present this huge volume. You've got to imagine there's a huge volume of data coming out of these, uh, these systems. So I guess this slide may be slightly over the top for some people here. Um, but essentially what we're looking at is the, uh, the, the oxygen reduction process at the cathode of the PEM fuel cells. And we're looking for alternative catalysts which are cheaper than platinum which makes up a large part of the, of the PEM fuel cell cost. And of course, what we're looking at is to try and find a material uh, that is cheaper than platinum and that approaches the activity of platinum. Currently, of course, platinum is basically the industry standard. So as I mentioned, we have these uh, electronic chips, which we can deposit our 100, material, 100 different compositions of a thin film material on. Um, and in the case of our fuel cell materials, we can screen these 100 different fields in parallel uh, in a half cell environment. And out of this, we can get, um, for example, uh, there's a range of different techniques that we can do, but we can measure the specific activity on each field. Then using our in-house software, we can get, uh, in the case here, it's a ternary plot. So um, you've got a, a ternary a composition there and plot on that the specific activity of different compositions and what you can see quickly is that, that, that you can get a hot spot of, acti of an active material at a particular composition area. Uh, in this case it's a cold spot because it's a negative current, uh, current so you see it as a blue, blue area on the, on the left hand side there. Now in the case of the palladium ternary catalysts, uh, Ilica has a published patent in that area for a range of different palladium material based materials. Uh, and based on that patent, we've been undergoing, as, as has already been said, a scale up and commercialization program supported by the Carbon Trust. So that model is slightly different from the model I told you about for, for commercialization that we use in, in other areas. Uh, so I'll give you a little bit more detail on that. Basically, back in October of 2010, we started with, uh, part, we partnered with ITRI to scale up these materials, uh, initially to a supported powder material. Of course, what we've shown you, what I've shown you on the previous slides, are all thin film materials. These, so a thin film ternary alloy. And you can find that you have great activity on a thin film ternary alloy, 
but then you need to look and see how that would behave when it's scaled up to supported nanoparticles. So we partnered with uh, ITRI, which is the, a Taiwanese research uh, centre, to scale up these materials to the sort of 10, 20 gram scale initially, enough material to perform uh, initial MEA testing. So the MEA testing was done at an independent third party facility, and that's essentially the stage that we'd reached at um, by July of 2012. <coughs> As has already been said, the next stage is to essentially transfer the IP from ITRI to a, to a catalyst company who are capable of doing scale up of these materials. Because you need for, for pre commercialization uh, programs, you tend to need about two to, two to 300 grams. So you want to be able to produce this on a batch of one kilogram kind of scale. Then want to do a further iteration of MEA testing to confirm that we basically still optimize these materials and to check that in going from the smaller scale to the one kilogram scale, <coughs> you're seeing the same level of performance. And then the materials will be ready to send out to automotive uh, OEMs for initial commercialization. And we've already had interest from several automotive companies, in fact, a couple who uh, provided letters of support for the initial work. Um, and then beyond that, there's further stages, which I won't go into in too much detail at this stage. Uh, but you can see that the, the overall model that we have here is that, and this has worked for, or this ILICO applies in more than one, uh, in more than one field, uh, that we combine the composition IP, uh, which ILICO owns, with the manufacturing IP from a catalyst company, uh, and any relevant third-party IP that comes out in free and uh, surveys to produce a final product. That product can then be sold on to customers. In this case, that would mean automotive companies or fuel cell companies. The revenue stream is returned to the catalyst company and royalties to Illica. So that's the, the sort of model on which we're operating. A little bit more specifics about the materials that we've produced. So. ITRI have made these carbons, these catalysts supported on carbon. We've confirmed the composition is in the hotspot region that we, that we were looking for, the <coughs> material. We've confirmed the alloy of these materials. And also, we were aiming for a particle size of less than 10 nanometers to be equivalent to what's in the field. Uh, actually, we've got a, it's a pretty narrow distribution around about four to five nanometers. And we've confirmed the activity of these materials in half cell tests because of course we wanted to see that the, the model, the thin film model basically translated to the other particles. Uh, the catalyst materials were then sent for independent MEA testing. They were tested according to the US Fuel Cell Council uh, protocols and the activity was compared to platinum standards. That was through beginning of life tests and beyond that we've done some initial accelerated stability cycling between 0.7 and 0.9. So that's 30,000 cycles <coughs> and uh, one cycle a minute. Um, we've also done some preliminary investigations into the effects of loading and some, some details on ink and MEA preparation, so things like iron to carbon ratios, kind of thing. So this is some of the beginning of life tests for a particular, one of our particular catalysts. Now you can see there is a lower performance than platinum. Uh, in the fuel cell, you can see that there. Um, however, basically, you've got to, the the US FCC standard states that you you compare the uh, the power density at a current density of 0.8, and then basically compare that on a cost basis. So we've done these cost comparisons. I should stress that these cost comparisons are done on the <coughs> cost of the raw material, the raw metals only. That's so that's the level on which these uh, comparisons have been made. Um, and essentially, while our performance is lower than the platinum catalyst, of course, our catalyst is considerably cheaper than platinum in terms of the, in terms of the raw metal components within them. Uh, the other thing, another standard which has been stated that the DOE suggests that all, mater all novel materials, non-platinum materials, should have an open circuit potential of above 0.9. So we also achieved that. We've also done some, as I said, some stability cycling tests. Uh, this, is an, this is an interesting one I put in because it's, if you look, the, the initial behavior of this particular MEA was actually not as good as the one I showed you previously. It's a different loading, and there's some sort of mass transport issues. 
What we've shown here is actually through the course of the 30,000 cycles, the performance has increased back to the level, towards the level shown in the previous slide. So essentially what we have demonstrated um, through on several different MEAs is that the materials are stable in this potential region uh, over 30,000 cycles. So this is just a quick summary of what I've, what I've told you. So let's say we've produced some technically uh, promising performance, performing palladium alloy catalysts. Um, they have the potential, this is based on this 70% cost reduction that I showed in the previous slide, the potential to reduce the stack's cost by 26%. As I was saying, this is based on a cost, uh, the, the raw metal cost. So I should stress that. Uh, we've developed a synthetic method to make these materials. And we, as I say, we always have, already have commercial interest from several automotive companies. Uh, as I said, the additional program the funding from the Carbon Trust. Uh, I've basically highlighted already, but there's the summary of what's going to occur there. Thank you very much. Thanks, Dad.